and uh, second second place in that event has just evaded me who finished second but let's uh, head on to the lightweight women's singles and the start list there of the lightweight women's single skulls lane one hong kong lane two poland lane three the netherlands lane four switzerland lane five south africa and lane six germany feels like a bit of calmness now as we get back up to the start for Carl Man Lee from Hong Kong. And we're going to have the Polish scholar in lane two. Mikolarczyk. The Dutch scholar, Kaiser. She had a good win in, in her heat. She'll be in that center lane. Patricia Mertz. She's performed well in the World Cups, has a gold in the World Cup series so far. South African scholar Kirsten McCann also has a gold in the World Cup this year. Hong Kong, Poland, the Netherlands. And Leonie Piper, who won a repechage very well. But it's hot out there, it's going to be a hot race again here. Final adjustments there from Kaiser from the Netherlands. And then all the scholars getting smoothly away. A good start here from all of our scholars and moving into an early lead. It is Kirsten McCann from South Africa in lane five. But like we've seen, putting yourself out there early isn't necessarily going to pay off. No, that's right. As we have a look at the scholar here, uh, Carman Lee from Hong Kong. And it's about getting into a good rhythm, a sustainable rhythm. We've seen in both the races so far, people run out of energy before they get to the finish line but um, as we can see just good strong sculling going out and it is Kirsten McCann who we're with now who's making a good start and just looking to get that boat up to speed quickly settling into a pace now which she hopes she can sustain and look to get some control early in this race. She took that gold in Lucerne so well uh, from the pole in this race uh, Martina Mikolajczyk so the only Piper there, the scholar from uh, Budegamani and Dusseldorf, coached by Tim Schoenberg, who is also the coach of Lars Wischer that we saw just dramatically qualify in the uh, second men's semi-final. Settling down nicely, isn't it, this first quarter with uh, the Swiss scholar Patricia Mertz. Of course, you think of a Swiss female scholar, you think uh, Janine Gamelan, the heavyweight scholar. This, this woman will probably be something like... Uh, 10 or 12 kilos lighter than the heavyweight compatriot. We see there the Polish scholar on screen, Martina Mikolacek. And a very casual glance there across to her left hand side, Marika Kaiser from the Netherlands. She's looking pretty comfortable at this stage in the race. Sitting comfortably in third position as we come up to the 500 meter mark. Drawing level now, it is Patricia Mertz from Switzerland who is coming onto terms with Kirsten McCann, the early race leader. I, I have to say, again, you know, if I could scull like any of the scullers in this race, it would be Marika Kaiser. So relaxed, so fluid. I saw her win the under-23 gold medal. She was the face of Rotterdam, and the massive big posters of her in 2016. She took the lightweight under-23 gold medal uh, this year in Plovdiv. She likes to lead from the front, so you can see she's finding it a little difficult up in this sort of senior event, but uh, I'm sure she can probably qualify. There's well, Kaiser's Martin, blade. You're talking about the Netherlands sculler here and, and that you want to skull like her. She looks so calm and so relaxed. And uh, let's see how that works for her, that she's just keeping close to those two leaders. Just wants to keep an overlap. You don't want to get dropped too much in this stage of the race, the second 500, but you certainly want to keep your cool. And what's interesting for the Netherlands is, of course, they, they were the Olympic champions with uh, Mikey Head and Ilse Paulus. And they've got, the no, they've got no lightweight women's double skull here. She is the only female lightweight from the Netherlands. And uh, I think they're looking to, you know, Paulus and Head are taking time off to work. They're looking to rebuild their team and probably resurrect it in 2019 in time for the Tokyo Olympics. We still see them locked together here. It's Kirsten McCann in lane five for South Africa, closest to us on screen. To her right, Patricia Mertz from Switzerland. And just comfortably with her bow ball sitting on the stern of the leaders is the Dutch scholar Marie Marieke Kaiser in lane three. And it's all looking pretty calm at this stage. 
It is calm, but we know they're going to be working. We know the pain that they're going to be in. And just that energy to keep opening the back, I think, is what's keeping these two scholars in front. And keeping them moving out as we come here through halfway. There's still a lot of sculling to be done in this race. And really interesting to see if the Polish sculler there coming through in lane two is going to be able to put pressure on the third place. Well, she's got to take a lot of confidence from that uh, silver medal result in Lucerne, where she took that... Uh Result just behind this sculler, Kirsten McCann of South Africa. The South Africans really have had uh, a great summer. I guess all right, okay, so the men's four didn't make the last 12 here, but certainly they've done so well in the juniors, under 23s. They've got a new sponsor, the South African rowing team, the Rand Bank. Things seem to be looking up for them, this Olympiad. And uh, right at the top is that uh, Kirsten McCann, the sculler from Such Rowing Club. We're with Patricia Mertz there and seeing that she's hanging right in there, keeping that body moving through, slightly starting to lose her legs a little bit. By that, I mean the seat is moving and the handles aren't quite coming with that body movement. And that will just start to build in a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a miss, a little bit of a missed power. And I think we're looking for the sculler from Netherlands to try to capitalize on that and come back in. Yeah, that, that's an interesting shout, Greg, because, of course, they've got two British coaches, uh, Robin Dow and Bill Lucas. That's uh, Robin Dow, you can see, casually cycling with the rucksack with his hands off the handlebars. Not sure that's a great role model there, Rob. But, uh, and now he's checking his phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's probably taking a camera and taking a picture of, you know, maybe to talk about that front-end timing that you mentioned there, Greg. Well, we talk about connection, don't we? And the connection is how well do you get the spoons connected to the water and then you're connecting your legs, your back and your arms so that you actually, when you move, the boat moves with you. And you can see quite a difference now as they're starting to fatigue a little bit through the front end of Kirsten McCann, uh, the South African scholar closest to us on screen. I mean, she really connects quite nicely through the front, a little bit of splash off the back of her blade as she connects uh, through the front end. But for me, the Swiss scholar was starting to swipe it a little, little bit uh, through that third 500, although I think she's she looks like she's actually pulling herself together a little bit here. I love that shot. Look at that flying ahead of those boats in that chevron formation from the drone we've got here. McCann in the lead, you see, and then to her right, the Swiss sculler. It's interesting to see now, just as they come towards the line, who actually wants to win this race. They're not prepared to just settle for these positions of first, second and third. Um, I don't think there's pressure, as we can see there. The Polish girl are now 57 metres behind. A, a, a significant gap between the third and fourth. But as it is, the Swiss scholar Kaiser is still putting pressure here on for trying to win this race and have that centre lane for the final. They're not far off world's best time, you know. It's sort of eight or nine seconds. That time set by Zoe McBride in 2015 in Varese in a heat, actually, of 7.24. I reckon they'll come down in, what, something like 7.31, 32. But this isn't the kind of race where you're going to expect to set a world best time because you would expect now if i was in this race i just want everyone to give up i just want everyone to accept their positions you're going to be first i'm going to be second you're going to be third but as it is no we're seeing it kaiser here keep putting the pressure on keep piling the pressure on she wants to win this yeah, well, she's up at 36 strokes a minute and you can see her starting to move back to kirsten mccann but she knows she's safe yeah that's merch she meant there oh, sorry. Uh, greg rather than kaiser but uh listen we talked about a technique but the uh, the uh, young woman there, she's really, you know, blown everyone apart in this last quarter, the 24-year-old. McCann, 29, she seems to be controlling the race a little bit as they come through to the finish, Greg. Just two more strokes to go. Well, I think Kirsten McCann's had this in control, but she's been made to work for it very hard by Mertzer from Switzerland. They've given it a photo finish. We'll have to wait and see an official confirmation as we look at Marika Kaiser now coming across the line clearly for that third qualifying spot and the rest of the crews uh, finishing the race they'll still have the b final to prepare for and they'll want to perform there because that's where the world ranking comes from it was a very Just controlled see. race there from kirsten mccann yeah and it's confirmed from that photo finish that she was the in first place trisha mertz confirmed in second and then marika kaiser here with that third qualifying spot 15 seconds off world, world's best pace in that event. There's Mertz, we see on the start. 
And that's a lovely shot just to see that pressure come in through her quads, her calves, and make the connection to that foot plate. There's, there's not many points you actually touch the boat. You touch the boat with the bottoms of your feet, with your backside, yeah. and with your hands. So it's only actually three points. So that effort, that work has to be channeled really efficiently through the soles of those feet and then into the hull of the boat. Yeah, Swiss Scully flying at the moment, of course, with uh, the Swiss double, uh, Deliers and Roe Easley doing so well to beat the Lithuanians. Swiss men's single scholar through Kirsten McCann there. 